hemos visto ahora, como lo de la Virgen de Guadalupe, ¿eh? uno se da cuenta como verdaderamente Satanás, utilizando esos plagios, no inventa nada, está copiando esas cosas de Dios. Por tanto, vamos a ver si lo que vais a leer ahora es solo alegoría o realmente es un hecho. Salmos 148, versículos del 7 al 10. Alabata Jehová desde la tierra, los monstruos marinos y todos los abismos, el fuego y el granizo, la nieve y el vapor, el viento de tempestad que ejecuta su palabra, los montes y todos los collados, el árbol de fruto y todos los cedros, la bestia y todo animal, reptiles y volátiles. Cuando uno lee esto, evidentemente piensa, claro, es obra creadora de Dios. Y incluso Elena Guay habla también del canto de los pajarillos que son como alabanza a Dios. Cuando uno lee esto dice, bueno, será una forma de hablar tan solo. Porque son objetos inanimados, muchos de los que aquí describe. Pero todos los objetos emiten frecuencias. O sí. ¿O no? Vamos a ver cómo algunos objetos sí emiten frecuencias y así se ha podido demostrar. Vamos a ver otro texto antes de seguir con esto. Salmos 19, versículo 1. Los cielos cuentan la gloria de Dios y el firmamento anuncia la obra de sus manos. Cuando vemos este texto decimos, claro, es que es una maravilla, ¿no? ¿Solo es esto? Job 38, 6 y 7. ¿Sobre qué están fundadas sus bases? ¿O quién puso su piedra angular? Cuando alababan todas las estrellas del alba y se regocijaban todos los hijos de Dios. ¿Las estrellas del alba se está refiriendo solo a los ángeles y demás? ¿O realmente también se refiere a cuerpos astrales celestes? Y 1 de Corintios 15, 41. Una es la gloria del sol. La gloria es, es algo concreto del sol. Otra, la gloria de la luna, distinta a la del sol. Y otra, la gloria de las estrellas. Pues una estrella es diferente de otra en gloria. ¿Son diferentes en gloria por qué? Porque una es más grande que la otra, una hace más luz que la otra y ya está. Es solo esto. ¿O es que pueden emitir una serie de resonancia electromagnética que varía de la una a la otra y que puede ser dado como una sintonía. Vamos a ver un vídeo que precisamente indagando sobre esto encontré. Es eh, de un señor llamado Luis Giglio, donde él también habla de las estrellas que cantan. Está en inglés, pero vais a ver, es bastante entendible, no quizás lo que él dice, a los que no sabemos inglés eso nos va a costar, pero, pero sí en las cosas que presenta. Veréis que quizás es un poco uh, tipo pentecostal, por decirlo de algún modo, ¿eh? al final veréis como voy alabando y tal, pero que dentro de todo muestra cosas que os van a hacer pensar si realmente esos textos eran precisamente solo una forma de hablar o una literalidad. Vamos a verlo. Couple more stars. This one is called the Vela Pulsar and it's magnificent. A thousand light years away, it's a highly magnet magnetized neutron star. Right. It simply means this star exploded into a supernova and in the case of the Vela Pulsar, it collapsed back on itself in a magnetic entity And as the pulsar, it began oscillating on its axis. This one oscillates 11 times a second on its axis. And that doesn't seem to move anybody tonight, so I just encourage you to when you get back to the hotel to oscillate 11 times a second on your axis, and <laughs> you will appreciate the Vela pulsar in a different way. And as it is oscillating, you can see what's happening. It's shooting a radio frequency out of itself. And so not only do we have this amazing photograph, but we're determined to hear somebody speaking to us. And so through SETI and other highly advanced um, 
electromagnetic telescope programs. We're listening to the universe day and night. And I don't know if you know this or not, but when I say we, I mean we as in your tax dollars are paying large sums of money to build radio telescopes that circle the earth to continually listen to see if anybody out there is speaking to us. To date, we have not heard any intelligent life speaking back to us, but we have gotten something for our money because when they aimed the radio telescopes at the Vela Pulsar, this is what they heard. And this is what this guy does 24-7, day and night, 365 days a year. This is what, from a thousand light years away, the Vela Pulsar sounds like right now. This is it. Listen to this. about you but I that blew me away I'm thinking wow this is incredible you're like well what does it mean I don't know is that some kind of Morse code for something or what it what, what does all that mean I don't know what it means but and I don't want to you know go too crazy here but maybe the Vela Pulsar got wind somehow innately of Psalm 148 verse 3 and says it says praise him sun and moon and all you shining stars we're a shining star we should praise him well how are we going to praise him I know let's oscillate 11 times a second on our axis and see if we can send a radio signal into the universe that would join in the symphony of of God's praise from all creation. It's singing. The stars are singing to him. I recently stumbled on 47 Tuck. It's a, a beautiful uh, cluster of stars. We'll show you the picture of it here. It's about um, 16,700 light years away from where we are. And you can see just this brilliant, it looks like a sort of he shoved a lot of diamonds together into a pile. It's an um, unbelievable number of stars there. Look at these. They blow up that central place right there. There are 12 of these super giant blue stars in there. But the things that are of interest to us tonight are these millisecond pulsars. 23 millisecond pulsars are there. And we've recorded 16 of them. And right now tonight, while we're sitting in this room, the 16 recorded millisecond pulsars and 47 tuck are making this sound right now. Who knew? No, God has his own string section. <laughs> He's isn't that beautiful. And we just looked at one 11 times a second pulsar and 16 millisecond pulsars, and you start seeing Psalm 48 come to life but look down at verse 7 it says praise the Lord from the earth you great sea creatures in all deeps fire and hail snow and mist stormy wind fulfilling his word mountains and all hills fruit trees and all cedars beasts and all livestock creeping things and flying birds kings of the earth and all people so now he's bringing us in we've got the heavens we have the host we have the stars the sun the moon and now he says to the earth and he names everything on the earth in some form or fashion and then he brings in us kings of the earth verse 11 and all people princes and all rulers of the earth young men and maidens together old men and children let let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. I love that he starts with you great sea creatures. We were in Hawaii a few months ago, and it was whale season there, and, and I was captivated by these giant beasts, and they, they seemed like they were 
putting on a show for us. They'd splash up and roll over and spout and blow and it was beautiful. And as we were talking to some of the natives about the whales and asking all these questions, how do they get here every year and how do they know to come to the same place to have their, their young, their offspring and how do they know how to journey? And he said, oh, you know, the whales, one of the main ways they get around is through the whale songs that they sing. And I got Psalm 148 all inside of me, and I'm like, no kidding, I, 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 I'm sure they do. And so I got to figure out what the whales sing, and so I start doing a little research, and I go online to find the whale songs, and I just want to bring it to you, because some of you live in Minnesota and don't even know where an ocean is, and so the, the whale songs could sound like this right here. Take a listen. <laughs> 